there, I'm Claire Tanzi. I am a cookbook author and a cooking teacher. And today I'm gonna to show you how to make one of my all time favorite comfort food dishes, a saucy beef pot roast. To make this really simple recipe, you will need a big, beautiful piece of beef. Now this is a uh, blade roast. Um, you can also use a cross rib. Basically, you may wanna make sure you're using um, a simmering piece, a piece that is designed for braising. So this is not the time for your strip loins or your filet mignons or your prime ribs. This is a time for one of those um, different cuts that sometimes go on sale. And let me tell you, whenever I see blade roast or cross rib roast on sale, I pick one up and throw it in the freezer. That's how much I love this recipe. I also love this because it's so simple. There's just a few simple steps then I put it in the oven for a couple of hours. And honestly, the whole thing smells so good while it's cooking that you'll find everybody in the house is saying, when is dinner? It smells amazing. You might even get a knock on the door from your neighbors. All right, so to make this recipe, you do need a nice big piece of beef. This is three pounds, roughly. And like I said, this is a blade roast. Um, it, you know, it sort of has an unusual kind of a look. As you can see, there's a couple of different textures in there, but this is perfect. It's nice and big and thick. And this is actually tied right around the middle, which is gonna make it a lot easier for me. I also need some all-purpose flour, some dried thyme, uh, a couple of vegetables, just, you know, your standard uh, carrots, celery, onions, a couple of cloves of garlic. Um, of course, canola oil, uh, my favorite oil, and uh, some regular salt. And then the liquid for this is a combination of beef broth and red wine. So all this comes together to make the most amazing comfort food, and you are going to just love this. Okay, let's get started. So let me just clear everything off of here. Make a little room for myself. Okay, move you there, move you there. Let's talk about this beef. Perfect, lovely hunk of beef. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a little flavored or seasoned flour mixture to roll the beef in before I sear it. Okay, so that's just some all-purpose flour and I'm going to add some dried thyme. I love thyme with beef, it's a perfect combination. And in fact, dried thyme is one of my favorite dried herbs. I don't actually, I don't actually love a ton of dried herbs, but I love dried thyme. I find often with dried herbs, you just don't get a ton of flavor out of them. So mm. let's stir, I'm gonna just stir the, um, the thyme right into the flour, just like this. Cause what I'm gonna do is, um, and then I'm gonna add a little bit of salt here. Cause this is really just like, um, like I said, it's a seasoned flour that I'm going to coat the beef in. So about a quarter of a teaspoon of salt is just regular table salt and stir that around. So I'm using a nice wide shallow bowl here. So I'm going to be able to get the beef in there in one go. Okay. Let's go over to the stove top. I am going to use this. This is called a Dutch oven, um, but you can use any pot that is oven safe as long as it's nice and deep. You can see this is like as deep as, um, it's even deeper than all my fingers. And it has a lid and it can go in the oven. So what I'm doing with this beef is braising it. And braising it is, uh, braising is a cooking term. It's called a wet cooking. Uh, doesn't sound nearly as nice. I think we'll stick with braising. But that just means that I'm going to be mostly covering this meat with liquid that beef stock and that red wine and cooking it at a really low temperature so that everything that's inside the beef can really soften and relax and it comes out just super tender and incredibly flavorful. And as all those deliciousnesses come out of the beef, they go into the liquid uh, creating a sauce. So it's absolute magic, but you need some kind of pot that's relatively deep but not too wide because you wanna make sure that the beef is mostly covered in the liquid. I'll show you that when we get there. And the first step is to brown the meat on the outside. Now we brown meat just to get flavor on it. it. Has nothing to do with sealing in the juices or anything like that. It's all about developing flavor from the very get-go. Um, and the flour is going to help the beef to brown and it's also gonna help later on in the oven to thicken the sauce. It's magical, absolute magical. So I'm going to turn, uh, turn on the heat underneath that pan and I'm going to put in some canola oil. And then as that is getting hot, cause I wanna make sure it's really hot before I get the beef in, I'm gonna roll the beef around in the flour. 
I'm going to preheat this pot to sort of medium high, quite like quite hot. You know, I'm not, I'm not messing around here. I really want to develop some nice color here. And uh, I'm going to put in a couple tablespoonfuls of canola oil, my favorite neutral oil. It lets the flavors of the dish really sing. And of course, it's not going to burn. All right, now once that is, like I said, I really want that to heat up and get really hot before I put the meat in there. So meantime, let us look at this beef. Just take a couple pieces of paper towel and dry it off. Give a little, give a little, a little towel off, you know? It's, it's a little bit damp. Sometimes meat, when it comes out of its packaging, can be a little bit damp on the exterior. And that really prevents it from getting nice and brown. So this is a, another good step. So get it kind of... Pat it down a little bit with the paper towel here. And then once it is relatively dry, my pan is heating up, now I can get my hands dirty. I can take that whole roast, that whole big piece, and then I'm going to roll it around in the flour so that it gets all coated in flour. Now I don't want this to be a really necessarily a very thick coating. In fact, I'm gonna tap off any excess, but I do wanna make sure I get it on every side of the beef. Okay, you can even tap it in here a little bit. There we go. Now, meanwhile, my pan is still just heating up. That's good. Because when a pan is hot and a piece of meat is dry, we're gonna get the sizzle. It's all about the sizzle. The sizzle is where the magic happens. The sizzle is how we get the caramelization um, and that lovely browning. And that is where we really develop flavor. Okay, hands are still dirty. So now I'm gonna be able to pick up the meat and gently put it into that really hot pan, that hot oil. You don't wanna throw it in there. You don't wanna, you don't, be careful with it. You don't want the oil basically to splash back on you. So let's do this nice and carefully. Pick up my beef and in you go. Nice little sizzle there. I even kind of press down lightly on the top of the beef to make sure that I'm getting as much surface area in touch with that hot oil as possible. Okay, now I get to wash my hands. Clean. All right, so I'm going to, don't get rid of the plate uh, because I'm gonna need that in a minute. But while the beef is browning, I'm going to start preparing the vegetables. Um, and the beef's gonna take about two minutes per side and I'm not gonna worry too, too much about it. I'm not gonna make sure like I have every single corner of it browned. This is just to start some beautiful flavors going. Um, and so, you know, I think this I'm about making delicious food uncomplicated. So um, basically by the time the vegetables are ready, I wanna be able to put them in the pan. But after about two minutes per side, two to three minutes per side, uh, I, I should be able to get that beef out of there and move on to the veg. So for the vegetables, like I said, it's your standard um, carrots, onions, celery, garlic, pretty basic. And I don't need to chop them too, too much. Uh, I'm gonna trim the celery just to tidy it up a bit. And I'm just going to chop it. I actually completely love the vegetables that go with the braised pot roast. It is just, they are so flavorful because they will have been absorbing those gorgeous flavors and also braising and getting nice and tender and really they're just, they're gonna be really flavorful. So I am just as excited for the veg as I am for the beef. I even sometimes add an extra couple of carrots because the carrots are really my favorite. And many years ago, when I was working in uh, the restaurant world, when I was working as a chef, uh, we braised a lot of meat and I would always throw in an extra carrot so that I could fish the carrot out and have it as my dinner, <laughs> a braised carrot. So same with the carrots, I'm just gonna give them a chop, but in the meantime, uh, I think I can hear that my beef wants to be turned over. The easiest tool is a pair of tongs, but sometimes tongs, look at, they're not even quite big enough to get around this. So you know what? I'm just gonna do my best to kinda, I've got a wooden spoon in the other hand, just see if I can turn this onto its side. The bottom is nice and browned, and I'll just wait 
to get that side browned up a bit. As always, you can reduce the heat if you need to, if you find that it's starting to smell like it's burning a little bit. <clears throat> the great art of cooking is heat management. And so adjusting the heat to, um, so that it's doing what you want it to do. Um, and what we want this to do is to brown, but not burn. So not so cold that it doesn't brown, not so hot that it actually burns just right. You know, the Goldilocks temperature. Uh, okay, back to my carrots here. So I'm gonna chop up my carrots and I'm, I'm gonna do this super, super chunky. These are gonna cook for hours and hours so you don't have to worry that they're not gonna get tender. So I just do nice big chunks of them. These are gonna be absolutely delicious, served up with the beef. So I've got my carrots, I've got my celery. Let's do some onion as well. Um, and to get this onion ready, I'm just gonna cut it into, I'm gonna do kind of big, big chunks and stuff. But I mean, not, not massive chunks, but big chunks. So um, the onion, of course, is providing flavor. Um, and it, it's really a very, it's a very good relationship that the beef and the vegetables have because the beef will flavor the vegetables and the vegetables will flavor the beef. And you know, everybody's very friendly when they get in there in the oven, they have a real good time. So I will make sure that the onion is small enough so that it can really deliver lots of flavor, but not so small that it'll just disappear into the sauce. Cause I still like to have nice pieces of it. So, you know, I call that kind of big, big dice, big dice. Not too fancy. Like I said, I'm all about making delicious food uncomplicated. All right, I can tell that that beef wants to be turned one more time. So let's get in there and turn it around again. Ooh. Oh, there we go. You can see how the browning is coming along really nicely. Oh, it's already smelling good. And just to get back to those vegetables, I'm gonna do a couple cloves of garlic here. Just get the, ooh, gonna get the skin off by kind of pressing the garlic down underneath my knife so that I crack the skin. And then I will just pull off that outer, that tough kind of skin bit. I'm going to slice these. Again, this is going to cook for hours and hours and hours, so you don't have to worry too, too much about it. Um, give it a rough chop if you like. And they are going to deliver their flavor to the sauce as well. That is it for chopping. I can wash my knife. It is over for chopping. Very, very simple. One of the things that I love about pot roast is it is very, very simple. I love beef stew as well, which is a cousin of pot roast but I find it takes just a little bit more work. And I gotta say, as soon as, as soon as the weather turns cold, this is the first thing I wanna make. My favorite cozy winter comfort food. I'm gonna let that beef turn one more time and then I'm gonna take it out and get the vegetables in. So once I get some browning um, right there on the, that final side, I'm gonna add, uh, start adding the liquids that are gonna be the next thing to go in. So I have a cup and a half of red wine here. Um, it's, it's a, just a good rule of thumb that uh, the red wine that you use in cooking should always be drinkable. Delicious. So it's not, you know, it's not off or uh, vinegary or anything like that. That said, it doesn't have to be expensive. You can get lots of great bottles of wine, um, especially Canadian wines uh, for low prices. So don't feel like you've got to splash out on an expensive bottle, but it should be something that is drinkable, it's not bad. And then I have got three cups of beef broth here and I use beef broth from Concentrate. It is my absolute favorite. Um, I can actually just add a little bit more water here. I find that if I use the beef broth in the Tetra Pack, I always have some left over. So although this recipe calls for three cups of beef broth, if you've got a Tetra Pack of beef broth, you just use the whole thing because what are you gonna do? Leave two tablespoons in there in the fridge? Just use the whole thing, you'll be fine. Okay, so that is my liquids. So I'm going to get the beef out of the pan so that I can get the rest of the stuff into the pan. Let's 
make a little room here. And let's get that beef out of the pan and back onto this plate. This is the same plate it was sitting on when I had it out of its package. Okay, so this beef is looking gorgeous. Look at this, it is browning, it is brown. Oh my gosh, so good. Not even close to being ready to eat, so don't you worry about that. But let's go back to that pot and get all these delicious things <clears throat> into the pot. So we start by adding the liquids and scraping up any of the brown bits that are in the bottom of the pan because that is where the flavor lies. Check it out, you see all those lovely little bits. That's the flour and some of the beef fat and some of the beef flavor. So that is amazing concentrated flavor. And the way we get that from being stuck on the bottom is adding liquid. That's the red wine going in there. And then just using a wooden spoon, I'm gonna scrape those bits off the bottom so that they, well, first of all, they're not stuck to the pan anymore. Yay, easier to clean but also so that all those lovely concentrated flavor bits get incorporated into this braising liquid. Oh gosh, already smells amazing. Okay, now I can go back up to a really high heat here because all I'm gonna try to do is bring this whole mixture up to a boil. That is the wine, here comes the beef broth. Let's chuck it all in there, great. And now come the vegetables. Doesn't matter what order you put them in, just get them into that liquid. The garlic, the onions, those lovely big chunky carrots. <laughs> I'll see you later. The celery. Just gather everything up and get it into this liquid. Here we go. Give it a good stir. The, the heat is on high now because now I just really want to get this whole mixture boiling. Now I used about a quarter of a teaspoon of salt in, the, um, in that seasoned flour with the beef. So I'm gonna add just another little eighth to a quarter of a teaspoon of salt here just to get a little bit more flavor into that. Of course there is salt in the beef broth. Um, so I don't want to overdo it with the salt. You can always add more salt to the sauce afterwards, after all the flavors have concentrated. There we go. Okay. So once this comes to a boil, I'm going to add the beef back in and I'm going to move the vegetables. I'm going to try to make a little bit of space so that the beef can sit kind of on the bottom of the pot. All right. That's really it. Um, I have the oven preheated to 325. Um, that's at standard. If you're using a convection oven, you can use convection at 300. Um, and it's going to cook for about three hours, uh, covered. And then after three hours, I'm just going to open and take the lid off. I'm going to maybe turn the, the beef over, just going to see how it looks. Um, and then I'm going to let it cook uncovered for another half hour to 45 minutes to really thicken up that sauce. But the best part about making a pot roast is you put it in the oven and then you can leave. You can go out, uh, you can you know, go for a walk, <laughs> um, you can go for a nap, you can do whatever you want. Um, and when you come back into the house, it's gonna smell really, really good. Okay, just to make sure I've got all my, I always like to make sure there's nothing, I didn't leave anything out here. I've got everything in there. Um, okay, so let's take a look here. Things are starting to boil. Already smelling really, really good. Great. All right, so that is just about boiling. I can take the beef and get it back into the sauce. There we are. Careful with this, don't let it splash too much. And if there's anything accumulated, like any little juices that have accumulated on the pan, you can just add them back in too. Now, like I said, I'm gonna try to kind of move the vegetables around a bit so that the beef is relatively flat on the bottom of the pot. And as you can see, there is only about a half an inch of beef outside of the liquid. That is perfect. So this is almost completely submerged um, and that is how this is going to braise. 
Now, as you can see, there's a little bit of bubbling happening here at the sides. That is good. There we go. Okay, so this is ready for the oven. I'm going to grab the lid and pop it in, turn off the heat there. And I'm gonna pop that in the oven, the 325 oven for three hours and then take a little look at it and then take the lid off and let it cook for about another 45 minutes or so. Um, well, that's it for me. I'll, I'll see you in a little while once this beautiful pot roast is done. Well, it was three hours and then I took the lid off and I let it continue to cook for about 45 minutes. And this looks perfect. Check it out. This pot roast is gorgeous. Look at how beautifully dark brown it is here on the top. The sauce has completely concentrated. Um, so the thing to do now, I'm going to just move this aside here. I'm going to lift the meat out of the sauce and just put it on this plate here. So be careful because it's going to be so tender. It's going to want to fall apart. So you can't just kind of pick it up willy nilly. So try to kind of do a two sided here. There we go. So that is beautiful. Oh my gosh, it's already almost falling apart. That is so tender. Cannot wait to get into that. Now, meanwhile, look at this beautiful, beautiful sauce. A couple of things you could do with this. Um, you can serve it as is. That's one way that I really just love to do it. You can strain out the vegetables um, and then you can even co concentrate the sauce a little bit more by boiling it on the stovetop. Or what I love to do actually with this is to strain out the vegetables and then chill everything. Chill everything, chill the vegetables, chill the meat and chill the sauce. And what will happen is some of the fat will accumulate on top of the sauce and kind of solidify. So you can take that out if that's an interest. The meat is also gonna be a lot easier to slice if it is cold. Um, and then, what, so I'm gonna slice the meat and I'm gonna uh, defat and maybe slightly concentrate the sauce. And then I'm going to put the sliced meat back into the warm gravy to heat it up warm up the vegetables in the same way and then serve it all together. So don't get me wrong, this is gonna be amazing right now. I could take, I could, I could put this on the table right now and it would be just delicious. Uh, definitely you're gonna want some like, mm, something to soak up all the goodness, like mm, mashed potatoes or you know, big thick slices of crusty bread or rice or even some pasta because um, this sauce is so good. Um, and so you but that's a great way to serve it. You can serve it right now, or this is a fantastic dish for a make ahead. Make it in advance for a dinner party, make it in advance for a big family dinner. It's all the work is done in advance. And all you have to do is reheat. You've got really a one pot wonder. You've got your meat um, and you've got your vegetables all in one dish. I am so excited. This is one of my favorite foods on earth and I cannot wait to dig into this. Thank you so much for joining me and watching this little video on how to make a saucy beef pot roast. I hope you love it as much as I do. Bye!